r slash ask credit asks people who grew up in third world countries what was the biggest shock for you when moving into a developed country this will possibly get buried but finally an ask credit i can relate to one toilet paper toilet paper everywhere you don't have to bring your own to a public restroom because there's one in every stall here in america and it's free two restaurant service and food abundance you asked for a medium well steak but was slightly overcooked you send it back to the kitchen and you get a new one cooked for you and the server even apologizes for it exclamation mark three black people white people asian people people with natural red hair in my 15 years living in a small town in central america i saw maybe two black people a handful of white people the one chinese restaurant owner and zero redheads. Now I get to see all kinds of people from all over the world, with different experiences and backgrounds. It's kinda neat. Just how much of my mind was previously occupied by machinations of keeping my family alive? Like always subconsciously running through the drill of what to do in the event of an armed hijacking or house break-in, and being super vigilant around people and in various places. No matter the time of day, I felt like at least 10% of my mental capacity has been freed up for other more productive thoughts like appreciating beauty and freedom, planning a prosperous future and trusting that the sense of security my family and I feel isn't just a ruse. My wife's first time in the US she burst out laughing at how a four-way stop worked, and just couldn't believe people actually follow the rules. What's annoying at four-way stop signs? without lights, in the US is not someone barreling past the stop out of turn, I've seen that maybe once in over a decade of driving, it's when someone thinks they're being polite by giving up their turn, no fuck you, you're next, we're expecting you to go next. It costs us all time if you don't go next. Not getting suspicious when a stranger talks to you on the street. I can't get over it, I get anxious every time, but people in Canada don't seem to mind at all where I come from. When a stranger approaches you, you nope the fuck out. In from, South, England and no strangers would talk to each other, you'd be considered an absolute lunatic. If you did want to talk about something, you'd have to strike a conversation about something we can all relate to, like the shitty weather. But I've heard about how nice it is in Canada, and my friend was shocked when people just randomly started talking to her on public transport, but she welcomed it. When I was in the Marines I had a friend that was from extreme rural Africa. So we took him to 3D shows and such. He had been in the US for around 6 months but even things like TV was an amazing luxury to him. Someone in the group picked up one at a pawn shop off post and gave it to him and he was just amazed that someone would just give him a TV. Something nifty. He had it set up so direct deposits would go to an account his village had access to. His salary as an E2 in the Navy made his family semi-royalty in the village. Grocery stores like Walmart, Publix, and Kroger. Huge and vast, have air conditioning, massive variety and tons of stuff I have never heard of. Huge culture shock to me and my father in 2001 since we had no major grocery stores in Bosnia at the time. That things would get fixed. I had a vending machine in my dorm building, it broke down and said well shit guess no more vending machine. Absolutely flabbergasted when I saw the machine repaired and working at it, changed dorm room to dorm building. In my school, we had vending machines in the cafeteria. My money got stuck inside and I was told I could call Coca-Cola for a refund. They asked me some questions, and they sent a person to fix it and they're mailing me two coupons for free drinks. The quality of the public infrastructure, and how respectful city planning is with pedestrians. Sydney is full of beautiful little gifts in the shape of shortcuts, stairs, parks, pathways. Everywhere. It truly is a joy to just walk through the city. Also, dogs are more polite than people where I come from. Sydney is the first western settled city I visited last year and I can't thank my lucky stars enough that I am moving there permanently in a few months. My roommate's co-worker is from Guatemala. He says the one of the best things about the US is that when you call for an ambulance, one actually shows up even if you aren't rich or important. Oof, that's sad. I visited my cousins in the US once. 
I was surprised that your houses don't have walls around them. There were only those fences at the side and back that pretty much anyone can jump over. Where I live the only houses who don't have walls surrounding them are those in compounds or subdivisions that have roaming security guards. Paid security guards not volunteers like the neighborhood watch kind of thing at it. To the people asking I'm from the Philippines but it's tilde nice tilde interesting to see that other countries carry this tilde tradition tilde practice. Edit, not really a wealthy family but not really a from dangerous neighborhood. It pretty standard here to have at least a 2 meter tall concrete walls if you have middle income but those poor ones just settle with barbed wire. Safety when walking on the streets during night. When in Brazil, I used to wait for my wife on the bus stop from college. As she usually left college around 2200 hours, it was dangerous. We used to live on a central zone, and her college was also central. In Ireland, if she leaves a party at 3 o'clock, I don't get concerned at all. So great to live without being afraid. It took us about one year to relax. This happens a lot in South America. I'm from Chile and is the same. We as women can't walk at night alone. It's dangerous. How little theft there is. I was always told to always mind my bag and make it clear I'm holding it tight. Now I can freely leave it beside me, sometimes not even look. I've had friends leave a purse on a table in a restaurant and I made jokes about how easy it would be to steal it. Just a lot more relaxing in public due to less theft. Another one is how less physical fighting in schools there is. From a young age I was always told if someone hits you, hit them back harder but when we moved to UK my dad told me before my first day of school if someone hits you, tell the teacher. Even from a poorer area in New Zealand to Australia, in the schools here, they leave their school bags outside the classroom. It's so strange. When I went to school we had our bag under our seat, between our feet if it wasn't actually being worn. That being said, every time I'm in a crowd I'm thankful for the basically non-existent pickpocketing and stuff. The one thing which baffled me is how there is an absence of petty crimes and how the shops in the city center were not worried about displaying their wares outside their shops. There was no risk of someone stealing those tiny stuffs. Also at night, the shops were just closed with their glass doors. No extra iron shutters with multiple locks and stuffs. Giant grocery stores are full of food and always fully stocked. Coming from Ukraine to USA in the 90s, my entire family's jaws dropped for hours. Ha, my dad's from Munich and my mom's from Krakow and the stories about their childhoods are sometimes so different because of that. Like my mom will tell you how oranges were a delicacy that you only had for special occasions while my dad will be like oh when we were bored we used to throw them at each other for fun. The discipline in driving. In my country, even when the signal light is color red, they just brush it off and continue accelerating. Fking morons. How old the houses are. I was expecting modern construction like in my country, but I instead saw old buildings which, ironically, valued more than even the more modern ones. Old buildings are often closer to the city center, so it's also location. Plus they may have historical value. How expensive many things are while certain things are very cheap but there is always enough. I grew up in Costa Rica, when I moved to the US, everything was way cheaper, then I realized how expensive everything in my country is, I mean, $13 for a small pizza is not okay. The Postal System The logistics of delivering millions of letters to millions of homes on a daily basis is astonishing. Especially at that price. The idea that I can send a letter across the country and have it reliably delivered the next or possibly even same day is truly impressive. Edit. Don't bother, 30 people have already made that email joke. I am astonished at this, and I have always lived in the US. We majorly take our postal system for granted. The lights. So many lights from street lamps, traffic lights, huge buildings lit up all night. Oh and the highways blew my mind. They were so wide and full of so many cars. I was six and I'll never forget that first drive from the airport to my new home in December. It was also my first time seeing snow. Edit, I joined Reddit a few days ago and today I got some awards and coins I'm not sure what you're supposed to do with. Thank you. Also, 
I moved from a small southern Croatian village, the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia at the time, 1989, to Toronto. I went to rural Kenya for work once and the lack of lights was the first thing I noticed. I grew up in a very small town, out in the county in the United States so I was used to less light pollution than most people here, but I'd never experienced anything like this. Just a total lack of any electric lights for miles and miles. Edit, for those asking, the stars are absolutely incredible, even coming from someone who is used to seeing a lot of stars. It's on another level. I watch shows like Ancient Aliens for fun and when I hear those nut jobs talk about how they don't understand how the ancients could have possibly mapped the sky so well I just say they've clearly never been to a place with zero light pollution. You can see everything. Drinking water directly from water taps. My grandfather was a yoke bearer in the Ukraine from the time he was 7, 1915, until he fled to Canada, 1922. He lived to age 92, 2000, and never got over the novelty of fresh tap water. Being a girl, you can live alone. I have a daughter living in Toronto, Canada, and another living in Halifax, Canada. They would never worry about physical safety or being robbed. Then my oldest went to work with street kids in Bogota, Colombia. It took her a long time to fully understand why people got upset with her wanting to go out for walks at night. I visited Germany once with my family. We were about to cross the road when a Porsche came racing through. Living in India, we experienced daily traffic mishaps and there is negligible concern regarding pedestrian safety and courtesy. So we were actually shocked when the driver literally halted to a stop and insisted on us crossing the road. There was no traffic light, no zebra crossings nothing and we actually were used to letting cars pass by before walking, so this was the biggest shock to us. Coming from Australia to Germany this weirds me out too. I recently started cycling for the first time in 18 years, so I ride with the skill of a toddler and the grace of a drunk. But never once has any car honked at me. No one has gotten impatient as I wobble my way around them, no one has gotten made about having to slow down because of this dickhead on a bike. Back home I would have been mangled by now, but in Germany people are generally very accommodating. Although I think it helps that I'm in a small city, no one's in that much of a hurry here. How things actually work You can rely on your electricity not going out at least twice a day. If you buy something and it breaks, there's warranty with little to no hassle. Internet actually works more than it doesn't. Public transportation actually arrives and shockingly, it does on time. If you hire a service, it'll actually be done and with an expectation of quality. The list goes on. Of course it's not perfect and there's shitty people everywhere, but that's the exception, not the rule. And it's a massive difference. And GT, if you hire a service, it'll actually be done with an expectation of quality. My time in Japan has ruined this for me anywhere else. Their services, from construction to fast food, are above and beyond anything I've experienced anywhere I've traveled. That's not to diminish services elsewhere, people who are disciplined and care about what they do are also very good at it, but in Japan even a part-time worker balancing high school and McDonald's conducts themselves like a host at a high-end restaurant. How fast food wasn't $50 per person, but rather $5 to 10 also, how much civilization advances when the AC is on on all day and everywhere, it's a blessing. This is a bit of a cop-out that I answer because I usually live in wealthy countries but I lived in a small town in Bolivia for 18 months and the two unexpected things that got to me when we left was cars everywhere, going to the toilet without it being an ordeal, and seeing your reflection. Such a weird thing, we lived in grass roof huts so the only time you'd see your reflection would be in our tiny mirror there's no glass or bathroom mirrors. I'm not vain but it was very strange to suddenly see what I look like all the time. I had lost about 25 kilograms, 55 pounds, while I was there so that was even stranger. I've spent a good deal of time in Swaziland working with kids, only to learn that most of them had never seen their own faces for the same reason. It's really fun to take an iPad and use the selfie camera to take videos of the kids, they get very giggly and kinda sheepish, but even the shy kids push and shove to get a glimpse of themselves. A Tsong an African man who was staying with me came rushing in the first week he was staying me and woke me up. 
He was extremely excited that there was a garbage truck with a motorized arm and was picking up the wheelie bins as it went down the street. Have you seen this? Have you seen this? He kept exclaiming over and over again, amazing, amazing. It made me laugh very hard, but he was a lovely guy. Wow, thank you so much for all the karma, did not expect this small but sentimental memory to affect so many people. Smile. South African here. The thought of a garbage truck with a motorized arm literally blows my mind. There's absolutely no rules here that state where our bins should be placed which I imagine is the foundation you need before you can have a truck pick em up by itself.